The Huntsman case was added on the 1st of May 2014, along with a bank collection. Aside from the Spectrum, it's the one case that can drop Huntsman knives, and it's fair to say that it's the most controversial of cases ever released. I'm going to start with the Howl skin, no longer part of this collection, but it's very important to cover. The picture originally came from Canis Albus' Instagram page. Will Z stole it from her and claimed that he had made it, inspired by his own dog or something. He and Sick worked together on the Howl skin, which was accepted into the Huntsman case. It was discovered to have been stolen. Valve replaced the art with one they made themselves, the Howl was given its own category in CSGO as contraband and can no longer be bought, only traded, making it insanely rare and expensive. Uzi and Sick have not been online on their Steam profiles for a long time. Although it seems like Uzi was certainly in the wrong, Sick might not have known about the stolen artwork at the time. Indeed, before making the Howl, Uzi collaborated with another skin maker on a Scout skin, also featuring the stolen artwork. This seems to be his contribution to the collaborations. This Scout skin was never released and he moved on to working with Sick on the M4 design instead. Unfortunately for Sick, since he was still involved with the Howl, any contributions he has had a part in have been removed, which also includes other skins within the Huntsman. Valve have replaced these with other skins of same class and weapon type, apart from the dual elites. Quite a few of the replacements were made by people who had worked with Sick on the removed entries, so if I had to guess then I'd say that Valve did this deliberately to try to reimburse the innocent people involved with this whole mess, but it still doesn't explain some of the changes. This whole thing is almost worth a video of its own. I'll leave it for another time though but I had to explain this mess to you so that you understand the rest of the video. It's because of all this that the Huntsman is the largest of all the skin collections, with 21 skins in total, though only 15 are still unboxable. The other 6 can still be traded on the marketplace, and with the exception of the Howl, can be obtained through trade-up contracts. I'll make it obvious which ones are no longer a thing as the video progresses. The Galil Kami by Thurnip, much like the 5-7 of the same pattern, uses randomised patterns to make every skin look unique. The same texture has its scale changed, offset, rotated and colours varied to produce something different every time. Thurnip created a manga comic from scratch and included it as part of this design, using the Japanese he knew to add text that he knew was not offensive. Halftones and swatches are used to create different shades and materials and the name, although supposed to mean paper, ultimately means God in CSGO. The SSG-08 Slashed was an early design by Red and MK. Red started with Left 4 Dead skins before moving to CSGO. He followed tutorials on how to create a chrome pattern, and after a lot of experimentation, this Slash design was made. Slashed was the product of watching tutorials on YouTube and was submitted to the workshop in early 2014. Back then he had no idea how big skins would become and only made it for fun. He thinks it was included in the Huntsman only because it fits the style of the case. The dual Beretta's Retribution are by Sick, so unfortunately there's not a lot to say about this skin. The workshop page shows a lot of contributing authors and still hosts a number of links to other works of Six, though the links are dead. The CZ-75 Poison Dart by Derp goes full circle with the name, much like the Ruby Poison Dart skin of his. He was inspired by a picture of a frog with beautiful skin patterns. He couldn't remember the name of it, so named the design Nitrogen because it looked like a chemical reaction or something. He's happy that whoever selected the skin at Valve knew more about frogs than he did and named it Poison Dart. Derp didn't know that this was the name of a frog so he was confused until he googled it, at which point he was happy again, as he says he's never been able to think of good names himself. The P90 Desert Warfare by Sick. Oh, it's sick again. Sorry. I'll go by what it says on the workshop page here. Its original name was Scorpius Reborn, with the scorpion itself done in paint style and with the she mark done in 3D. The Tech 9 Isaac by Coridium is related to the Asimov series. His plan was to have three different colour palettes. The Tech 9 was the first design, which he wanted to be recognisable as the collection with its futuristic style, but also very different. He designed it in the same way but added more variation and detail to the line work, which he says is best demonstrated with the Bison example on the workshop. It was Valve's decision to change the name to Isaac, which Coridium loves because he feels it makes sense. It shows that it's still associated with the Asimov, but at the same time also has its own unique identifier. The CZ-75 Twist by PLA Studio is his first anodized multicoloured finish, and was inspired by spirals and spinning shapes. It's part of a collection of five different skins under the Gyrate collection name but hasn't been updated since mid-2014 now. The P2000 Pulse by Thurnip is a pistol version of the Pulse design. Every weapon class has a unique colour scheme and pattern. You may know him for his purple SG Pulse, which I've covered previously. The design is intended to look as though the weapon is shattering, from a virtual world into the real one, so it's being dissolved into reality. He likes the contrast between intense colours and the black background. Algis made the P90 module because he really wanted to make a hexagonal themed skin, 
At first he made it white and red, but he inverted it to make it black and blue instead. He added small details to it and published it to the workshop under the name Royal Bleed, though Valve changed the name to Module. He would like to note that although the appearance is always the same, it has the potential to be random and that it was once again Valve's decision to keep it the same every time. The PP Bison Antique by Ancient is the successor to the Nova Antique. It was only with the second skin that he started to consider it becoming a recurring collection. As it's worn, part of the design rub off to reveal a bright shiny metal surface underneath. Its most valuable condition is Battle Scarred, which is rarely dropped and looks very different from the factory new edition. The XM1014 Heaven Guard by UKR Scorpion was influenced by various anime and he says that getting it accepted changed his life and everyone he knew. He also provided me with a high resolution Heaven Guards backdrop, which could be used for a desktop or something similar. The Org Talk by Reek and the Rock was the first of the design to be accepted, followed later by the military spec USPS Talk. This one, however, is restricted and sports a high contrast black, yellow, white custom paint job finish. On the workshop he stresses that he made a custom scope for it as well, but that the workshop pictures don't show it for some reason. Ivorycon told me about the Mac 10 Tata and how he reached that stage. He said that workshop designs were incredibly challenging, and although he loved art, he knew nothing about digital art or how to get it onto a weapon. He spent months practicing until he could produce something professional. He worked on many projects with his friend, Clint, with this being one of them. After this he joined a group called Antpire. It was during this time that he made the Mac 10 Curse, which also got accepted into the Huntsman case. He got inspiration from magazines, digital art online and horror movies, from which he sketched out an idea and decided that it would fit well on a Mac 10. He says this was the most difficult stage. He finds sci-fi and modern designs hard because of the limited space that most weapons have. The Mac 10 Curse on the other hand was done in a few days and achieved far more success than his older Tatters design did. He found out about his skins being accepted midway through a game on Mirage on CSGO. Seeing people use his skin is very rewarding and puts a smile on his face every time. The Scar 20 Cyrex by NextGen Z was the first of four skins of this design to be accepted. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of information about this design. He uses the custom paint job and is available in all wear conditions, though Battle Scar is the least common drop. The M4A1S Atomic Alloy is in Face It's workshop page, but was designed by Hanata and had several big names involved with it, including Cruridium, Red, Zafk, and Thurnet. Money raised from this skin will be committed to the prize money of upcoming tournaments. 80% goes towards this, and 20% for the artists involved. The USPS Orion by Renegade was his first accepted skin. He was so happy when it made it into the case. But sadly, a few months after the Howl incident, he was removed from any revenue, as though he didn't even make it. He still sees it in-game from time to time and is disappointed that all of this happened, but luckily Renegade got later success with the Hyper Beast design, which made up for it a bit. The USPS Cayman by Zafk, much like her other accepted submissions, is a hand-drawn design. This is the third of four that she has had included so far. A Cayman is an alligatoroid crocodilian, but I think it's more alligator. But it's close. Obviously it's I can be seen on this design. The M4A4 Desert Strike by NextGens is part of a series of skins intended for the likes of Dust, Mirage and Overpass. It's the first of two from this collection to be accepted. The second was the Negev that came out soon after in the Breakout collection, though strangely this one was only military spec, in direct contrast with the covert nature of the M4. The AK-47 Vulcan by Jim is the end result of a lot of experimentation, ideas and merging to find something that the community would enjoy. He showed me pictures of it during various stages of development. Early on, he had it as a hunting rifle with wooden handles bolted onto a metal frame. It wasn't too well received, but he liked the pattern and began experimenting with different materials. First was plastic and carbon, then Mikata, then finally he merged it with another skin of his, a basketball P90, because he liked the idea of a grippy rubber coat. In fact, he started to focus more on what would feel good rather than what would look good. Once he had chosen rubber, it came together very quickly. He tried a duck design, but the workshop wasn't too keen on it. But the light design was well received straight away. He then spent time fiddling with the details and fighting with the UVs. He wanted the skin to be absolutely seamless, which he says makes it pretty much impossible to apply the same style to some other weapon models, such as the Desert Eagle or Elites. But he's been slowly expanding the Vulcan collection to all of the weapons that would suit it well. He even experimented with different ways in which the wear could be distributed. So, thank you to Jim for such a detailed breakdown on the making of this gun. He even came back to me later with some delightful 4K renderings. He knows me so well. His favourite weapon is the knife and one day hopes for a knife workshop. Valve?
Please listen.